This is for married couples. An example of this, of a cultish environment, is this is how much access these individuals have with their authority that breeds a cultish environment. Is This is only for married couples. And maybe if you're dating, they even control the sexual Im intimacy that married couples have. I'm not even exaggerating. This level of cultish behavior in some churches and movements goes even to the extent of controlling the sexual fulfillment that married couples in their covering are having, which means they control how you and your spouse are having a sexual intimacy. Like, that's crazy. Like, literally. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. You're probably saying that that, that can't be so. Uh, it is so. Like, and watch this. And married couples are telling their mama and their papa their sex life. But when you don't know any better and there's a fear environment of this person has access to my next dimension. You know, like folks be telling their spiritual father and spiritual mother how many times they're having sex, um, how they have sex. And I go, what? I'm here to tell you, your spiritual parents do not need to know how you and your spouse have your sexual intimate relationships. That is not honor. That is not honor. Your apostle and prophet and your pastor has an issue with sex and has a lust problem and has a fetish with hearing stories. If your apostle, prophet, pastor, bishop, leader, senior leader, spiritual mama, spiritual father is inquiring about your sex life, your leader is a pervert and has a fetish. And these stories are nothing but soft porn without looking at Porn. Your spiritual mother is a pervert and your spiritual father is a sex fiend. Own it. And if you're an apostle and you're watching me and you do that, you are a pervert and you know it. You got a lust problem. And I'm going to make these folk leave your church. Mind your business about the sex life of your spiritual sons and daughters. What kind of sexual fiend are you if you're watching me stop telling your spiritual leaders your sexual life stop it that ain't god that's control and your spiritual parent is going to use it oh, oh, oh one more thing just know that who that whom you told your sex life to your spiritual parent is telling other people in the church Everybody knows in your church your sex life because you're a hundred percent of the time that in movements where it go, it goes to that level of control of that the, the, the spiritual leader is knowing the sex life of his sons and daughters, 100 percent of the time they are telling other people in the church. And I apologize for those of you that are new to the faith and go and are saying, what the heck is going on? Now you know why Jesus said they're false leaders and false teachers in the world. Second Peter chapter 2, the whole chapter is dedicated to false teachers that I'm talking about. The whole book of Jude is about teachers that I'm, leaders that I'm talking about. This stuff exists. What? You need to read more of your Bible. And another thing. Ladies. Your spiritual father is lying to you that they're going to marry you. Yes, I said it. That's the only way you're going to understand. They are lying about the struggling in their marriage and they're going to marry you. No, they just wanted to get into your pants. They are lying. You are not the one that they're going to marry when they get divorced. You have been lied to. They are lying and you are in a cultish environment. Yes, sir. You need to run for your life. You need to run for, you need to run for your life. And Pagani is bold enough to tell you, half these people, I know them, I'm in their green rooms. 
They act different when they're around me because they know I'm about that life. I don't understand that. When I talk like this, people be like, man, this is tight, man. Like, is that where we at? That we can't tell each other the truth or we just that dumb in the spirit and we just like, just keep them dumb and let God handle it. God sent me here as a Jehu. I'm going to be in their face. I want to see some of you apostles and prophets. Go ahead. Do your little witchcraft prayers and tell your intercessor team you got to pray against P Apostle Pagani. I promise you, nothing's going to happen. You praying in vain. I want to see you 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to go astral project. I want to see you try to pass the angel of the Lord that protects my property. I want to see a witch come in this house at 3 o'clock in the morning talking about. I'm going to attack you in the astral projection realm. Please. Nothing's going to happen. I'm a Jehu to this generation. Period. Leave these cultish churches. Run for your life. Your little fake intercessory prayer. You got to pray against Pagani's ministry because he going too hard. Pray against him. Nothing is going to happen. And the thing about it is that you know it. And when I see you, it's going to be all love because you know you're still going to invite me to your church to preach. My call today as I close out this topic is run for your Life. Run. Run. Run for your life. Get your family and go. Nothing is going to happen to you. They lied to you that if you leave, you're going to get cursed. I'm here to tell you if you leave, you're going to get blessed. As a matter of fact, since you've been under them, you've been cursed. Your money's gone. Your family's backsliding. Your marriage is about to end because all you're doing is fighting about the covering. Run! Go! And leave. And if they act up, tell them I sent you. Say, Pagani told me to go. You know what they're going to do? Nothing. They're going to sit there and huff and puff. <sighs> that Pagani guy, he, he got an orphan spirit on him. That's why he's always yelling. He got rejection issues. You gonna listen to him? He got rejection issues. Baby, I ain't got no rejection issues. I ain't scared of you and your little witcheries. They're not even real. You fugazi. You bogus. You're not a real apostle. You're a false one. And, you are, and others of you, you are a real one, but you have gone the way of Balaam. Repent of your sin. And in the end, I'm telling you, you're gonna end in hell. With your apostolic office, you're going to end burning in the lake of fire. You are those that say, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not do all these miracles in your name? Depart from me. I never knew you. And I'm going to empty out your church. Watch me. I'm going to make these folks realize that you're a cultish, toxic environment. And they're going to leave. And you're going to have to thank me for it. Because I love God's people too much. I don't, let me tell you something. I'll say this right here. I don't honor my colleagues that much. You just, you know, I'm just going to honor them and just let it be. Nope. Nope. Jehu here. I don't follow these little rules. Don't be my friend. You know, but, you know, us preachers, we got to like hand together. There's an honor factor. Or oh, I honor you. I find out you doing this cultist stuff. Oh, I'm going to honor you all right. I'm going to honor you. All these people right out your church and right out your movements. I warned everybody the month of October, I'm on that stuff. And then in November, I'll be back to my normal, my normal cool stuff. This month, not playing. Spiritual warfare. And you know what you're going to do, uh, apostle and prophet? You want to know what you're going to do? Cultish apostle and prophet and cultish church, cultish pastor. Come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here. You want to know what you're going to do? Come here. Nothing. You're going to do nothing. Screenshot and send messages to your sons and daughters talking about don't listen to this message or Pagani this, whatever. That's the most you're going to do. For those of you that are watching, if you get the text about this message, 
that's the sign for you to run. Do me a favor, the rest of you, share this video to every member in your church that you feel needs to hear this. Let's empty their church up. Tag everybody and say, you need to see this. Tag somebody that you know that's dealing with what I'm talking about now. Say, I know you're going to be mad at me, but I need you to see this message. Do it now. Jesus' name. I'm gone.